Um, what is morning doing in Ketuvot? Isn't that tractate about marriage contracts? It is, but the Talmud is not a straightforward textbook or code of flows. It goes Mishnah, Mishnah. Roughly speaking, each Mishnah is a rule from the older collection, which is also called the Mishnah. It follows each Mishnah with a synopsis of all the arguments, teachings, and discussions that were associated with it. That part is called the Gemara. As part of the discussion about weddings, Rabbi Yitzchak remembered that he heard Rabbi Yochanan say, it takes a minyan to say the groom's blessing and the groom counts. Women did not and still do not in orthodox practice. It takes a minyan to say the mourner's blessing and the mourners do not count. This led to a discussion of the circumstances in which the mourner's blessing is said and whether it is done for the entire Shiva, the seven days of mourning, or just the first day. As evidence of what the law actually is, somebody brought a case where Reish Lakish went to comfort a mourner, his son's teacher who lost a child. Presumably Resh Lakish, one of the foremost sages of the Talmud, knew exactly what to do. Resh Lakish came, didn't come to console the teacher, Rabbi Chia Baraba, on the first day. When he came on the second, the teacher asked him to say something about the kid. In one version of the story, Resh Lakish quoted the Torah in Deuteronomy 42.19 and God saw and rejected because of provoking of his sons and daughters. He explained that in a generation that in which the fathers provoke the Holy One, blessed be he, God gets mad at their children and they die young. Did he come to counsel the father or to give him more pain? That is incredibly rude. He implied that the father is so important, God himself considers him worthy, punishing for the sins of the generation. That is a huge compliment. But in general, there isn't really much one could say. Later, when asked to say something about the mourner, Resh Lakish told them, this is what stands forever. It is a path from the six days of creation. Many have drunk, many will drink. As the drinking of the first ones, so will be that of the last ones. Our brethren, may the Lord of Consolation comfort you. Blessed be he who comforts the mourners. So what's the point of the Shiva if there's nothing to say? I will let Resh Lakish answer that, from when he was asked to say something about the people who came to comfort. Our brethren, performers of acts of loving kindness, children of performers of acts of, of, performers of, acts of loving kindness, who hold fast to the covenant of Abraham as father, as it is said, for I have known him, to the end that he may command his children. Genesis 18:19. Our brethren, may the Lord of reward pay you your reward. Blessed are you who pays a reward. You don't need to say anything. Being there is enough. The Talmud then relates a story that mourners used to drink ten cups of wine. Then it became customary to drink four more toasts, but people were starting to get drunk, so they went back to the old custom. Ten cups? That should be enough to make them drunk. Not really. Back then, people were a lot more used to drinking alcohol because it was a way to kill the bacteria in the water. Besides, there were no soft drinks. Instead, they drank the wine mixed with water. Anyway, an interesting aside is that one of those toasts was for Rabban Gamliel. Rabban Gamliel, who lived in the later days of the Second Temple? What's he got to do with anything? Burial costs. To oh. quote the Talmud, or at least the translation, at first the carrying out of the dead was harder for his relatives than his death, so much so that they would leave him and run away until Rabban Gamliel came and treated himself lightly, and they carried him out in garments of linen, and then all the people followed his example and carried out their dead in garments of linen, which, by the way, is still what we use for shrouds. Rav Papa said, and now the common practice 
to carry out the dead, even in rough clothes worth only a zoo's. That's great, but what about the mourner's blessing? What mourner's blessing? The one we started with? The one that said he's only on the first day on all the days? I don't know. The Talmud doesn't say. After that, it jumps to questions related to the virginity of a first-time bride. This doesn't make sense. Why tell the story as evidence and then not give evidence? Wait a minute. What is a mourner's blessing? Probably, blessed be he who comforts the mourners or something like that. And Russell said it in the story of the Talmud. Could Russell Keys just say it randomly if it was not appropriate? No, you're not supposed to say blessings without cause. That is called bracha levatala, and it is a, it is a sin. He didn't... Wait, that wasn't on the first day, was it? Of course, he didn't come on the first day. I see what you're getting at. Yes, he said it on the second day. Therefore, it must be appropriate to say it during the entire Shiva.